Okay, guys. Okay, so let's start. Okay, guys. So welcome to this uh, live or this replay. If you are looking to, uh, if you are looking uh, at the replay, and we are going to start. I even prepared a little presentation. Here we go. So the impossible deal. So this is how I uh, I would describe this deal because I believe that there is only. 20% that this deal would happen. So why 20%? I will, I will uh, explain to you in a, in a few minutes. So what is this deal about? So we are going to buy copper cathode. In, so this is this is what copper cathode uh, looks like in the, in uh, Congo, and then resell it, resell them in Zambia. So just for you to, to understand, so we are going to buy copper cathode in the, this part of Congo. So which is basically what we call the cobalt and copper belt of uh, of the Congo and then we are going to put them into into little uh, trucks into little trucks and then re put, resell them in Zambia so now if you don't really know the this trade you're like look it seems like it's quite straightforward it's uh, <laughs> it's not that far and, and and you will be right but mind that Congo is maybe uh, LDC is maybe one of the most uh, difficult country to to work with for a lot of reasons, I think the if you take like all the bank in Congo, I think the value of all the bank is like nine billion or something like this, something like ridiculously small. So there is no financing, no people willing to to lend you money when you deal with Congo for a lot of the, a lot of reasons. So this is a extremely difficult uh, country to to work with, and basically the world is like if you manage to get copper cathode or any any, uh, any type of copper actually out of Congo and then you can put them into a bonded warehouse uh, in Zambia so or a warehouse in the end of a huge uh, huge uh, warehousing company like uh, Steinweg, uh, Bolloré, Access World, uh, Politra also, Seva. I mean there's a lot of uh, of um, mm -hmm. big companies that, that, work, that work in Zambia and once and once you have your copper cathode into those uh, warehouses, then it's extremely easy to get an international client to buy it. So uh, then, so what is the trade? So I'm going to just, how is it? I don't know what's the best. Yeah, so let's do it that way. So what is the trade? So we are going, so uh, then I'm uh, first, I'm going to explain the, the supply chain and then I'm going to, to explain the trade. So. Uh, as we are talking, uh, of, as we are talking uh, about copper, of course uh, there is a mine. Then the copper concentrate go to a smelter. Then the smelter, then from the smelter, these go to an exporter. Then the exporter put that into a truck. Then the truck cross the border to go into an international warehouse. And then from that, uh, and um, a warehouse from an international company. And then from that, it's exported to wherever, like uh, Europe. China, GUA, I mean, where the copper is needed. So basically how is going, how this trade is working. So we uh, are going to buy from an exporter. I mean, not exactly. We are, uh, I'm not a buyer in this trade. I will act as a broker. And I've said a lot of things about the fact that brokers are completely useful. I still believe it, but please bear with me. So we are going to buy from an exporter, which is going to, who is going to pay for the export uh, taxes and so on. Then, as a broker, we are going to put a little bit of our money and we are going to uh, pay for the transport from Congo to Zambia. Then, when the product is in a, in a bonded warehouse in, uh, in Zambia, then the buyer is going to test it. And only at that moment, the buyer is going to pay all commission and also the, the exporter. So... It's uh, quite a straightforward trade, um, but now there's a lot, a lot of things that is quite. Um, how can I say? Yeah, I said this is only twenty percent that it works for for one reason. It's like I don't really know what is going on in this part. It's like I have proof that this exporter already did a deal like this in the past. So there is like some, um, yeah, so you have some proof that, uh, I mean, he's not a complete scammer and he knows what, what, he, what he does. But I still, I've, I, I spoke to him, I asked a bunch of questions, but it's still completely unclear from, from me. How is the guy going to get two, between two and three million? Because this is the value of the cargo copper. Uh, you can check, I don't know what is the price right now, but basically we're going to, 
I mean, the cargo is, I, I don't want to, to speak about uh, too much details about the deal because I mean, it's still uh, ongoing, so I don't want to disclose too much information, but basically the cargo value is between two and three million. And you are telling me that the guy, the cargo value is between two and three million and the guy doesn't have uh, three, three thirty thousand to pay for the transport. We have to pay for the transport. So this is the part that I, I mean, I understand the guy told me that, um, I mean, the, the guy told me that uh, he's already completely strapped, that uh, he doesn't have enough cash to, to pay for the transport, blah, blah, blah. But um, uh, but it's still it's still weird to me. So, And also, we don't take a lot of risk because, because what is going to happen is we are going to put in an escrow the value of the transport in a bank. And basically, the, the, the exporter is going to get the money from the escrow only when the, the, the goods have reached the warehouse so for us it's really not really a question of getting of getting scammed so so this is why i still this is why this, this is why I, i'm in the deal because it makes sense on the paper but then in the reality there is always a lot of things that could have that could that could go wrong so one thing that we are going to do so someone from my team is going to go to congo at the day of loading to make sure that the copper cathode is loaded in the trucks and also we are going to use uh we are going to ask other uh, for an inspector to come and then to check you know they have those like pistol to see if this is really the quality i mean if this is really copper and not like i don't know some kind of <laughs> other stuff that they have put to make sure that the quality uh is the right one and if you think about it it would make sense because here don't forget that uh, the um, the the exporter is getting paid only when the the good has been tested at the in the international warehouse in Zambia, so there is no way that they're going to put a bad, a bad quality uh, because yeah, he knows that it's not going to get paid. So this is why I'm not really, I'm not really, I don't really think that there is a scam in that way. What I what I'm really really afraid is that we are going to put everything that the escrow. We are going to send uh, someone there to to make sure from Switzerland to Congo to make sure that uh, everything is going to get loaded um as we as, as it should but what i'm afraid is that we're going to go there and no goods are going to be there to be picked up no copper cattle are going to be there to be picked up because again i don't uh, i don't know exactly what is uh, the relationship here between the mine the smelter is the smelter also a mine is um, i mean I, I don't know the relationship between those two those three parties so this is why i cannot really assess the uh, if the, this deal is going to get through or not so uh that's basically that's the yeah basically it. uh one other thing so i spoke with a lot of um, metal shredder that i know because uh for the people that don't know i'm from geneva there's a lot a lot of people that that trade uh, african uh, african metals uh here and basically they told me damien i don't think that it's going to work <laughs> <laughs> like uh, it's extremely complicated to get copper out of Congo. If you uh, people that do that, I mean, they're, they're, um, I mean, they've been they've been doing it for years. They know people on the ground, blah blah blah. But if you manage to do it, of course, I'm going to be a buyer. So this is basically I spoke with uh, five different uh, traders. They all told me the same thing. So we'll see. But you know, I'm not that cynical. Maybe 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 there is a chance that this is not like a fugazi and there is really a deal there. So we'll see. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going to, to to take your questions. So, uh, bam, bam, bam. Uh, so yes, yeah, so this is basically it, man. If you have like any question, just put it into the chat, and I will re reply. Here we go. Up. Yeah. Um. Yeah, this is basically yeah. It's around that price. It's copper. Tough. Uh, just a quick question: What is the difference between international house and that terminal? Uh, yeah, man. So, uh, if you look at, I mean, maybe I will add it again. So, if we look at the at Zambia, you see, like there is like no terminal. So, what what they call bonded warehouse is basically a warehouse which is like under. Um, it's like a parfum in French. This is the, the bonded warehouse in which that the the copper cathode are not going to stay in Zambia, but they are going to be they are going to be exported. So this is what we call bonded warehouse. Even though this term does not really mean shit, but this is what we 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 mean by bonded warehouse. Then international warehouse. Uh, it's just this is an international company that uh, under that um, 
that are the operator of the of the warehouse. So, because I mean, you can imagine that there is a buyer I don't know in Geneva or in Abu Dhabi or whatever. And if you said that, yeah, the copper is in the warehouse of this uh, small uh, Zambian guy in, I don't know, at least in Africa, I mean, there is no trust that this is really, I mean, that there is really copper, that, uh, that the, the warehouse is not going to be like, I don't know, is the warehouse insured? It's going to, so, so many pro trouble that you can have. So this is why when we mean international warehouse, it's a warehouse um, operated by an international company. And there's like a dozen of really big international company. Then usually buyers, I mean, believe that uh, when they get a warehouse receipt from this international 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 company, they know that this is a uh, this is legit. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. You need a yeah. They they have a license, and actually, is going to pay for the the exporter is going to pay for the. Um, the exporter is going to pay for for this. Then this I, actually it's quite expensive, from what I understood. I mean, expensive compared to the value of the of the metals. And also, some smelter have like a preferential export uh, rate or something like this. But uh, yeah. How do you find JNU and the supplier? Man? Ah, <laughs> so you get to do what what what, um, what I'm doing right now. So. Just to, to let you know how this deal um, came on, uh, on my life. So, um, very, very weird story. I, a guy on LinkedIn contacted me like, Damien, one of my friends is getting scammed, uh, but he doesn't know, blah, blah, blah. Basically, someone is want to sell to him, I don't know, copper cutter that minus 25 discount in Congo. Um, and I'm sure that it's a scam. Is my friend is going to be scam. Can you tell him uh, what is the reality? And, Basically, I said, like, yeah, look, it's looks like a scam. Everything from Congo, 99% of the people in Congo is, go is going to try to scam you. I'm sorry about that, but if you're from Congo, I mean, you, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, but I asked, actually, what was the price? What was the discount? So, uh, but I asked a couple of friends that I know work with Congo, what is usually the discount of the copper cattle? Uh, and one of those friends told me, hey, Damien, I, I, I've just, uh, I have a deal right now. I mean, I need someone to get funded. Would you have a look? Maybe you want to come as a financier? And this is how actually uh, this uh, this happened. But how do we find a joint supplier? This is a big, uh, this is a big problem. This is why one of my guy, I mean, one of my partner is going to go there to see the people, to meet the refinery, to meet the mine, and to meet, uh, yeah. So, I mean, there's like no other way that to go on the ground and that to, to shake hand. Yes. Okay. 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 So definitely. So, uh, but there's like, we are going to get paid roughly 3% of the value of the cargo to broke this deal, which is huge. And the reason that we get a huge commission is because what we are trying to achieve is extremely complicated. There is only maybe, a, I don't know, not a lot of people that are able to achieve that for a multiple reason. But uh, what we have, if we, are, we, are, we have customer that are willing to pay in Zambia, I mean the, the cargo in Zambia and then ship it overseas, and um, uh, and so this is a, this is a part of the trade that we are doing like Congo from Zambia. But this is sure that it's way more complicated. To, to be honest, it's way easier to buy in Zambia and then to to sell it internationally, and the margin are really really low. So it's um, uh, yet yeah, maybe less complex, but uh, it's uh, less money. And also, if you want to do that trade, that trade buy in Zambia and then yeah, export it. You need to have a lot, a lot of finance. I mean, a lot of, you need to have a way to finance uh, the shipment because it's going to take months to to arrive to the to the client's uh, facility. Because I mean, look at the map. Sometimes you just need to. I mean, the, the warehouse is there. You need to. You can go to Dar al Salaam. You can go to Durban. I mean, it's a huge. I mean, the inland takes like a month or maybe like three weeks. And then there is like the sea, another month. I mean, and if you need to get finance five billion, it's uh, a lot of money. What are the great? Ah, yeah, we buy. Oh, we, um, so it's a copper cathode. Um, now the grade is um, it's low quality copper cathode. This is why there is a huge discount on the LED price. Yep.
No, no, dude, this is a lot of them, lot of them. I mean, it's it's a lot of money. Um, okay, there's a lot of big mine that are operated by uh, by huge company, and but there is a lot of small mine that are more entrepreneurial, let's say, and you know they have like no means to to finance it. So two million, I mean two hundred metric ton of uh, copper cathode. This is uh, okay. Maybe it sounds like a small deal, but it's a lot of money. And I can tell you there is a lot, a lot of uh, miner and producer that are willing to do such small deal. No, no, definitely. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> I mean, as I said, I still think it's twenty percent of a uh, of chance of uh, that it it happen. Um, what I'm going to do is actually it's not me actually that are going to go to Congo because I have other stuff to do. Uh, and but I will ask um, Adriano. Actually, it's Adriano. I don't know if you've seen the the video where we we go to Afri uh, South Africa. Uh, Adriano was with me, so it and it's Adriano that is going to to go there. So um, I will ask him to to to, to, make, to make a video and so on, so to see how how the things are going. But uh, but yeah, thanks. Yeah. Cool. Yes, yeah. Um, do we have like uh, any other question? Uh, I mean, I'm here for another like at least uh, 25 minutes. Is buying material uh, at a port in your deal or is it a scam? I mean, a lot of buy uh, buyers are buying FOB. So why does supplier sell at the port when they have the fence? Yeah, so, OK. So it will really, really depend, but let's say, uh, I don't know, let's take something like uh, Chrome. So you know I'm involved in a Chrome mine. So it's a Chromium. So there's a lot of trader. What they do is actually quite simple. So they buy from, in South Africa, they are going to buy uh, from Chrome from a lot of different mine, and then they are going to aggregate all those small lot in a port, and then they are going to sell it to, um, and then they are going to sell it to another trader, which is going to have, um, the relationship and the finance and also the way uh, the way to finance a full vessel to China, because I mean it depends the the commodity, but usually like uh, the fifty percent of I would even say like seventy percent of the margin is um, buying into a, buying um, in a mine in Africa and then bringing it to the port, and then thirty percent of the margin is selling to the Chinese customer because most of the metals are going to China. So, um, and also to do this, uh, if uh, you are doing a shipment in a full vessel, I mean, you need a lot of money. <laughs> so, so it's not all the trading hours can, can charter a vessel like this. No. Ah, no, no, it's, it's basically the same principle. Uh, I, I used to be like a, a soft commodity trader. Uh, so now I'm, I'm more in metals, but uh, it's this is this is really the same principle. Maybe there's less more problem, uh, more quality issue with uh, with agro, but that's basically the same. I mean, but you, you need to to learn uh, your your product. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, here the deal, the buyer. Is buying the the DAP, uh, the, the DDP uh, in Zambia delivery duty paid in Zambia. So the buyer is buying like that. So, but either here, okay, it's not like a straightforward deal. The one that we are doing that with like one buyer, one seller. As we are as broker in the middle, and we are also uh, financing the the transport. But yeah, the end buyer is buying uh, uh, delivery duty paid, yeah, the DDP um, Zambia. Dude, mate, give me, uh, give me the financing. I mean, uh, Hala, if you, 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 if you want to finance me, make no problem. I, I, I will do that. But, uh, but yeah, but yeah, so there's a lot of problems. So the first one is uh, to get out. How, how do you get finance? Uh, a shipment to two, two to five million. I don't know. You, you need to get uh, to get finance. And uh, now, I, especially the, the the rates are going up. It's uh, much more difficult. But that's uh, the first issue. Then the second issue is selling to China. I mean, it's not that that easy, man. Uh, working with um, with uh, with Chinese, usually you need to have like a an office there, 
Um, and you know, especially that, that now that we are in a bear market, I mean, they are quite. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they can. Uh, they are not like the. When the market is going down, there's a good chance that uh, your Chinese buyer is going to default on the contract uh, or not to perform the contract. I mean, not a good chance, but this this happens. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is a uh, this is why. So it's it's really another job to. I mean, you really need to to know what you do and know your buyer when you sell to China. Hey, hello. So um okay, so about now if you are a, a small commodity trader, you are going to be get it's extremely difficult to get finance. So there is a few ways to do that, but usually I mean you need to to use your balance sheet at the beginning. So that's mean that you need to have money to start a, a commodity trading firm. I mean I don't know how you can do that without money. Um, and then who, which type of bank finances support that? So there's like CTF fund, commodity trade finance fund that will uh, support you. Uh, and there is also the local bank. So, uh, assuming you you are the, um, in a in a, um, an export country, uh, but you know, you need to have a track record, dude. and you need to have also money. Money. I mean, your own equity. So, if you don't have money, you need to find someone that will will put the put the money to to create this equity. It's uh, otherwise it's uh, it's tough. It's tough. What do you mean? Do, do I finance call transaction? Um, I uh, I also work for uh, Matasphere, the Matasphere network, and then uh, it's a network, and there is finance here that finance those type of transaction there. But I, I do not finance call transaction. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know this bank in the RC, but uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe maybe I should contact them, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'd rather not. <laughs> I mean, and this is also why it's really difficult to uh, to work with DRC. Like the the banking system, it's it's tough to tough to work with. Definitely tough to work with. So, guy, yeah, what what do you think so far? So, um, is it not this thing? Is it not Are you learning? Do you are you learning something? Um, yeah, just uh, just let me know. Yeah, there is a this delay. Very interesting, Gary. Again, interesting, learning a lot. Yeah, I know that. I mean, a lot of people are. Um... Ah, Leon. So, yeah, Leon. Oh, thanks, thanks for showing up. So, Leon. Um, uh, I mean, he worked with me um, with the Shipping Community Academy. I think uh, he wrote a bunch of uh, um, of blog posts there, and he also be with. Um, with all the modeling and the, the financing stuff uh, with the mine in uh, South Africa. So it's cool that you you say hi. Oh, and basically, you know, I also need to send you a WhatsApp about something we need to do for Nigeria. Thanks, Damien. Thanks, Mitchell. Thanks, Andreas. How long does it take? To, what do you mean by monetize? So usually the LC, it's like, I mean, it depends, but you have like 21 days after shipping shipping date to, to present the document. So usually this is it. Uh, and what is what happens if it expires before shipping date? What do you mean? If you don't ship before shipping, uh, if you don't ship before the expiry, so then the then the, the LC expire and then that's it. Man. You need to ask your buyer to, to issue a, a new one. And it's going to be pissed because it takes money to, to issue LC. Uh, so yes, and what do you do if you don't present after the 21 days after the presentation? Uh, then it's a, it's a discrepancy, and in case of discrepancy, for those I don't know, um, you, you need to ask uh, to, to ask your buyer to lift the discrepancy. So you are basically fucked because uh, uh, then the LC is like a catching a document. I mean, 
Depends depend on the buyer, but sometimes they can get a good way to have the, the vessel at, uh, at uh, arrive just to leave the discrepancy, so they don't have to, to finance uh, the, um, the cargo. Yeah, I think it's HK. Um, uh, HK, yeah. yeah. Oh, another one, uh, but yeah, it's HK, Alex Stuart or Robinson, but it's one of those. What kind of financial model? Mm, what do you mean by financial model? The, but the big, the big, okay, the big trick, uh, maybe by if you mean by financial model, if they have their own model, yes, they do. Uh, for sure, the big trading firm uh, have their own model, but then I mean, it's really depend the the commodity. For instance, I, I knew I knew a guy that worked in the uh, with Bitum. Um, and they had like a model where they could like um, they have the the quantity. I mean, what was the model again? Yeah, they could see like all the um, the quantity of bitumen that each refinery could uh, produce. Uh, when a refinery goes into care and, man and, and maintenance and so on, so and then by doing so, they could like see what is uh, the real supply and demand. And, and also, they had like an extensive. Um, uh, a database of all the projects that is going to require bitumen by each country. So, if this is what you mean by model, uh, yes, the big trading firm they they do have one for sure, um, for sure. Only Victor Secrets model. I don't know, Gary. You know, I'm like, I, I try to get this. Uh, I try to have this uh, YouTube channel as uh, gender neutral. No, oh, I'm fucking kidding. Man. Of course, of course, I fully as Victoria Secrets model. What the fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah. Um, so thanks. We're like sorting people live. I mean, this is this is this is this is a, a victory. <laughs> So yeah, guys. If you have like uh, any any other question, just uh, please let me know. Um, I think we can go as in like uh, uh, ten minutes, and then I will, uh, I will I will will stop. Why do? What does it, what does it mean? A A U sellers? I don't know. How many deliveries do you need for this delivery? No, no, it's uh, one. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's a uh, 30, 30 metric ton per truck. It's 10 trucks, so it's 300 metric ton. It's one uh, one delivery, um, if this is what you mean by delivery. Uh, and uh, and then, of course, if it, if this deal works, then, I mean, hopefully, uh, we can do that again every month uh, and make a lot of money. But <laughs> that's, that's a best case scenario. Ah, gold. Yeah, ah, yeah, of course, gold. I'm sorry. Yeah, what? Yeah, because they are scammers. The guy, the guy that you find on LinkedIn, they are scammers. So this is why. Okay. And by the way, maybe I should do one um, one live about all the gold scam that I've seen. So. Yes, like yeah, thirty meter. Yeah. What do you mean by ah the mine? Ah the mine, it's going. Yeah, the uh, the Chrome. Yeah, the mine. Uh, I will uh, do an update um, um, again. I think in I don't know two weeks or something like this. Uh, the mines, a lot of ups and downs. A lot of ups and downs. I mean, it start. It's it's fucking slow. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> so I would have hoped that uh, it would be a bit faster than that. But uh, yeah, yeah, we did. We had a, we had a lot of issue, but. Still, still ongoing. Maybe I can show you pictures. I think, yeah. If I'm not luck. Yeah. So this is. Oh shit. So yeah, this is this is a. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So this is a the pilot was it we have just sold right now. So.
No, it's normal that there is a that there is a, a, a price difference because this is the price of inland from uh, Zambia to uh, Dar es Salaam. So this is normal that there is a, a, a price differences. So, but then Eric, man, you if this is a scam or not, I mean, you need to go there and see. Huh? Let's see by yourself. Huh? Because um, yeah, I can maybe show you again the the map. You, Dar el Salam is there. Zambia, man, it's a uh, long ass uh, transport, man. It's a lot of diesel to, to transport this, uh, this, this stuff. Huh? How are you making? Hey, it's a good question, man, Eric. Thanks, thanks a lot. Hopefully, uh, I would not have uh, to, to, to sell my laptop because I'm completely broken because of this uh, Chrome mine. Wait, uh, <laughs> we'll see. Oh, shit, can happen. Yeah, Eric, if you can uh, sell, like, um, how, how did you conduct this research? This is quite interesting. Uh, what price am I getting? Uh, 1,150 rand FOT. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, uh, as I said, man, it's, this is uh, as Eric uh, said. I mean, you you need to go on the ground. So if you want to to trade, you need to have um, a lot of money or at least access to a lot of fun, and you need to to go on the ground. Because usually, I mean, you see, when you go to a mining uh, a mining um, a city or like a port or something like this, I mean, you can just go there. I mean, there's like and go speak with people. I mean, this is usually how you make the best connection. Yeah, you know what? I, I know some some guy that got scammed a lot. I mean, uh, avoid a lot of them, but get some a lot. So I will ask him to come uh, on on a live show because it could be funny. But usually, yeah. Uh, so about the gold. So the thing is, like all those guys on LinkedIn that sell gold, everything is a scam. Everything is a scam. Ninety nine percent of them are, are scams. Because there is not a lot of each time you see these uh, pictures with a lot of gold or some somewhere in Africa, then you know it's a scam. Because there is no reason to have a lot of gold in one place. Usually, the, you know the mine they have no no money. So as soon as they have something to sell, they sell it. They don't wait to have like a fifty million in gold to to sell it. But it, it doesn't work like that. So, but maybe I, I have pictures again uh, about scam gold. Uh, hold on a second. Uh, where is it? I don't want to show the names. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Yeah, so maybe if you... when you see pictures like this, the guy like is in Uganda right now with a lot of gold. I mean, this is this is full scam. No, no, no. So, oh, what do you mean call? Of course, I, call. I mean, we discussed. But like so, emailing simple, oh uh, no, RFQ, RFQ and all that kind of stuff. I mean, this is complete bullshit, man. I've been, uh, I did a lot of trade in my life. I've never ever uh, replied to any RFQ. I've never sent a LOI. I've never done all that paper shit, man. All those documents, those it means that there's like no trust. And if there's no trust, that it means that uh, no deals are going to to maybe it's some yeah so i don't want to be like categorical like this like oh if there is like loe rfq it's a it's a, it is not going to work but um from my experience uh, it's mean that uh, it's already in a bad bad situation i don't know man um uh there is like i think there is one uh, blog post uh, but the old old blog post 
uh, on the Shibli and Kubaditi Academy uh, blog, where um, I explained how I did uh, research. And by research is like uh, getting data, import data and export data of each country. Basically, uh, you, you find the HS code. Uh, if you don't know what a HS code is, there's like a YouTube video where I explain that. Uh, and then um, and then with this HS code, you can find export data and import data of each country. And so basically, this is how um, I did my research, if this is the type of research that you are looking for. Yeah, I mean, I mean thank, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot, man. But uh, to be honest, I mean, we don't really need to... This is not we are doing, we don't really have a selling problem right now and selling is selling is never really the issue yeah exactly yes yeah yeah but you know, uh, usually um, uh, Venezuelan gold goes to uh, Colombia, then it gets uh, Colombian paper, whatever, and then it's uh, sold uh, in, in the US, uh, mostly Miami. So I said that, but maybe I don't know what I'm saying. Yes, Samia. So how is going your, your new, new job? How is going? When, when are you going to start? Samia is one of the students of the Saka. Um, uh, academy and he's just got a, a new job in a training house exciting so when are you are, are you going to stop man i can i can send you there actually uh but i'm not really sure that uh your new employer is going to be happy if you go work for me man Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Uh, okay. I, I, can't. <laughs> I don't know, but gold is uh, the most dangerous uh, commodity to, to, to deal with, so I can't tell. Yeah, cool. Cool. <laughs> I don't know. Samir is not going to, to work for Glencoe. I mean, like, you know, you know the deal, man. Yeah, actually, the, I, I told you about Colombia because this is uh, the deal that uh, that I saw. I went to, to Colombia, get the document, and then um, went to Miami from there. But, man, again, gold is so dangerous, man. I don't know what people do that. Yeah, because it makes money. So um, yes, so do you like this type of format? It's a bit weird for me to be honest, but uh, uh, I think it's uh, if you if you think it's a terrible thing and so on, maybe I can do that like every couple of weeks or something like this. Um, yeah, just just let me know like in the chat if you like it and you would like to to have the same kind of format. About the um, time, I think uh, yeah, uh, evening uh, EU time. This is when I can do that. Maybe I can maybe squeeze it. If they like people from Asia, to let me know in the comment. Uh, if you can do that uh, during EU time um, or lunch, I don't know. Ah, you watch my yeah, my YouTube video, yeah. Uh, how do you get a vessel? Man, what, what can I tell you? I have a YouTube channel, I have a shipping and community academy. Man. Join the academy now and then I will help you. Man. To sell my shipment. Thanks. Cool, man. Yeah, I have a genuine core supplier, but I mean, there is a lot of genuine core supplier in South Africa. Thanks, man. Okay, so uh, still, if you have like any question, I will. Uh, is, I think it's like forty-two minutes. Uh, so if you like, like uh, I will say again, uh, three minutes. Uh, I will say um, if you have a still one question, I can answer, and then uh, 
I think we will uh, say good night. Thanks, man. Thanks. I mean, and to be honest, I think I'm the I'm the biggest uh, commodity physical commodity trader channel on YouTube. So with my 800 subscribers, because uh, I mean, there is no one. <laughs> I mean, no, maybe no one is uh, too stupid to do to do that on YouTube. Maybe I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, 15, uh, I've seen 15 uh, people on the, on the live stream. So seriously, uh, this is cool. Man. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, more opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, before uh, we couldn't find anything. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, but okay, there's one reason that like all the big companies, I mean, th this is extremely clear with their with their with their um, with their employees. They they are not allowed to set anything. So uh, this is why people don't really talk because then you know if you get fired, you want to find another job, and then they find that you said something on the web. I mean, they could look bad. It, it um, I mean, it it looks bad. So there's like a a real reason that no one speak. But I think this is complete bullshit. To be, to be honest, I, I think um, uh, the more people speak about it, I mean, uh, I mean, we are no one is doing anything nefarious as far as I know. So, and also when you are, let's say that you are a cocoa trader or you are a copper trader or whatever, I mean, you know exactly what is going on in the market. So this is not like there is like big trade secrecy that you cannot reveal or something like this. Thanks, man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. Usually, if the price is too low, uh, then this is a red flag. Uh, and if they send you pictures with a lot of gold, then you know it's also a, 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 a red flag. And then, but usually, I mean, you won't find online a real supplier. Most of the things that you will find online are scam. Not most, ninety-nine percent of the things that you will find online are scam. So, and if you really want to have like a real, real gold supplier, then. I mean, you take a, a fucking plane and you go directly to see it by yourself. Yes, I'm still based. I'm in Geneva, Switzerland. Ah, yeah, with bank, yeah, sure. <laughs> yes, man. Look, guys, so thanks a lot. That was my first slide, so I hope that uh, you like it. Um, so I think I, it was a pretty cool. So I will uh, most probably do, do one again in two weeks. Um, and then le le uh, let uh, in the comment below what you would like the subject to be. Uh, and then uh, we'll see. Ciao, guys.